Welcome back to Flashpoint. This week, Charlotte holding the Democratic primary and turnout. All you can say was abysmal. Less than 24,000 people voted, which means turnout was just under 5%. It was, though, a big night for incumbents, with one exception. Tijuana Brown coming out on top in the District 3 race, which represents Steel Creek and West Charlotte. Joining us now is District 3 City Council candidate, candidate Tijuana Brown. Tijuana, welcome to Flashpoint, and congrats on your big win. Oh, thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you for having me this morning. It was a big night for incumbents, as, as we've mentioned, but but you were one of the new faces that that got through. What What's your initial reaction to the win? Oh, it was so much joy in my heart, in the heart of my mom, you know, who raised me, my hardworking single mom, and then my two daughters. So, you know, my family was just elated, as well as the community, and I was just happy, you know, just overjoyed. I, with joy and, I, and happiness, of course. I'm sure your mom had to be proud. Um, during this campaign, you you battled significant allegations uh, during your your primary, including questions about the validity of your nonprofit that works to help incarcerated women, your own past. Do you think any of that, now that you've moved beyond the primary, do you think any of that could come up again in the general election in the next uh, two months? Uh, I'm sure it may, but if they watch the election, people don't like that. And they don't like when um, someone is considered a community hero that has overcome everything that I've overcome from generational poverty, as you mentioned, to um, being 19. Well, let's go back. Started getting in trouble at 16, became a product of my environment, born right here in Southside Homes Housing Projects on the corner of Remount Road and West Boulevard and um, South Tryon. That whole area now, if you ride through there, you can still see some of my history, which I am very, very uh, fond of my foundation and where I come from and just love my community and how they've supported me. The community really came out. People that I spoke to at the polls immediately brought up how I endured, how I persevered, took the high road, um, stand, um, stood in transparency and stood in my truth. And people like that. They like when the tough questions come you answer them, but understand that that's my entire foundation of my past. Beauty after the bars, if you listen to the names, it completely tells a story. Um, what do you see as the biggest challenge that you face uh, now that you got the primary behind you uh, heading into the general election? I want people to come out and vote. I want to see the numbers go up. I mean, of course, I got 60% of the vote, but we know that it was historically a low turnout and we watched it and uh, my campaign analysts, they look at the numbers, they see the numbers, they tell me what I need to do, where we need to go knock on doors. I'm gonna continue to knock on doors. I'm gonna continue to connect with the constituents because that's what matters. To me, you can get through any challenge that's before you in any race, political race, if you're running for something uh, in school, if you're running for something at, at, at work, if you just stand in your truth and you tell people who you are and you connect with the people that has to make the decision. It's always been with me about connecting with the community, making the, uh, making the, connecting with the community and making the constituents know that I am who I said I was when I knocked on their door. And I think that was the biggest thing, you know, knocking on doors, speaking with the constituents, connecting with them and letting them know that I'm gonna be accountable, available, and accessible. And just like you said, the tough questions came, the low blows came, the allegations came, but I took the high road. I stand firm on Michelle Obama's famous quote, when they go low, you go high. And we went extreme. A final question. Um, let's say you win um, after you get sworn in. What is your top priority as Charlotte's newest city councilwoman? It is to restore hope and trust and transparency. It is to, I'm a different type of candidate, as everybody is saying, a different type of candidate. And I just want to clarify what that means. You know, we have a big budget that we're responsible for. We have $3.5 million budget. You know, there's a lot of things going on in city council now. Uh, the 2040 comprehensive plan, you have the UDO. The main thing I want to do from day one is to restore hope and trust. City council candidate, Tijuana Brown, Tijuana, thanks for coming on Flashpoint. We do appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome, and thank you. You have an amazing day. I love your background now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Nice right, message as well, I must say. All right, All right. Tijuana, thanks. Thank you. All right, more Flashpoint after this.